Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Now before we get today's lecture started, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our cool nifty new study guides, not here on YouTube. Click the link right up here at any time during this video. Alright guys, let's begin. Now to diagnose a DVT, we use a Doppler ultrasound, like a maternity ultrasound. It's non-invasive, meaning we don't have to cut into the patient to see and hear how blood is flowing through the vein. Now, if that doesn't work, then we cut that patient open and inject contrast dye into the veins. This contrast highlights the vein to see where the clot is located. This is called a veinography. Now, when the same exact thing is done to visualize clots in the heart, it's called an angiogram in the heart attack. So it's just fancy words for an x-ray picture we take after injecting dye into the vessel. But guys, this dye has iodine usually, also called contrast. So always ask your patient if they're allergic to shellfish or even iodine itself. Huge safety tip. Now as far as labs, there's gonna be elevated D-dimer. That's a big NCLEX tip indicating a DVT. D-dimer measures that there's actual clot breakdown in the body, which is happening all the time. But elevated D-dimer shows elevated clot breakdown, showing we have a big clot problem. All right, so now that we know what's wrong with our patients in a DVT, what are we gonna do about it? Now the goal of treatment for a DVT revolves around preventing the dislodgement of the clot. If the clot loosens or floats away, it can get vacuumed right into the heart and then into the lungs, causing that deadly PE, that blood clot in the lung. So use the acronym DVT to remember the priority nursing interventions. D for don't walk or move too fast. This means bed rest. That clot is like a ticking time bomb, guys, waiting to get loose. So no hot pad, only warm and moist pad. And everyone always asks why. Well, guys, what does heat do? Is heat a vasoconstrictor, meaning it squeezes the blood vessels? Or is heat a vasodilator that opens the blood vessels? Well, guys, it's a vasodilator. So opening the blood vessels will loosen the clot. Only warm and moist pads here. And speaking of bed rest, no TED hose and no SCDs, guys. This may dislodge the clot. Now, V is for venous return, which means we elevate that extremity. All venous problems. Remember, V for elevate. Okay, now after the clot is resolved, we use T for teaching DBT prevention. So guys, remember the acronym CHAT. C is for calf exercises to move that blood around and preventing the stasis. H is for hydration. Remember, drinking eight glasses of water per day. Fluid helps make the blood less thick, making it easier for blood to move around the body. A is for ambulation, so moving that blood around. Walking, guys, is always the best way. N is for no long sitting. Guys, we're talking about cars, airplanes, and bed rest. Big NCLEX tip, a huge risk factor right there. I already know tests are gonna give you scenarios about a patient on a long flight or a long car ride complaining of pain to the calf or one-sided leg swelling. And so guys, it's a DVT, always expect them to have respiratory problems and that's a huge lung clot. Okay guys, lastly is T for TEDs and SCDs. This is only for after clots are resolved. This helps move blood back up to the heart, stopping the pulling of blood, AKA stopping the stasis of blood where it stays just in the legs. All right guys, now for drug treatments during and after blood clots. During DVTs, we treat the big clots with surgery like a thrombectomy, a surgical removal of the big clot. Now fibrinolytics, AKA clot busters, which are not routine for DVTs, but are still used, these guys are like the atomic bomb. They're one-time push drugs. So we give either TPA or streptokinase, but guys, streptokinase has the most allergies associated with it. And the big thing with these atomic bombs is the huge bleeding risk. Since it has an eight hour or less duration, this means we're most at risk to bleed during that eight hour window. So guys, no injections at all, no new IVs, no sub-Qs even for diabetics, no IMs, and definitely no ABGs. These drugs can only be given through a compressible site like an IV. So we never give these through a central line because we can't hold pressure on that central line only peripheral lines here. Okay, once the DVT clot is resolved, or to prevent a DVT like after surgery, specifically knee or hip replacement surgery, thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right guys, see you next time.